Welcome to the East Warehouse. Have you had breakfast today? If yes, what did you have? Nowadays, we have so many options when it comes to food. But what did our prehistoric counterparts eat? Join us in exploring what was on the menu in tomes long past. All specimens on display in A Journey Back in Time. What did prehistoric humans eat? Were excavated from the Shiqiao site in Tainan's Xinshi district and can be dated back to Taiwan's late Neolithic period, roughly 2000 to 2800 years ago, a part of the Dahu culture. These artifacts are a conduit for us modern humans to gain an understanding of the role that diet played in human development. This exhibition draws a comparison between prehistoric diets and overly processed, resource-intensive modern-day diets, providing food for thought on how we should approach sustainability while feeding ourselves. The first theme of this exhibition is Picture this, feast with prehistoric humans. Throughout civilization, the concept of eating well has always been attached with great importance. Having a nutritious diet and honoring the food in our plates ensures that our brains have fuel for development, boosting our imagination and creativity. Changes in diet and lifestyle have played a major role in our evolutionary history. As you move through this exhibition, try to picture our prehistoric counterparts and how they lived. Some of them hunt and trap animals, while others make tools and catch fish. Seeing the artifacts before your eyes, do they match up with what you pictured? Let's move on to theme two. Food is life. It's not just about filling yourself up. Take a look at the tools and containers in the display cabinet and try to imagine how our ancestors came to invent them. For example, stone knives were created by filling or breaking rocks. This handy tool proves that prehistoric humans knew to use the sharp end of a knife to carve meat and process food. The arrowheads you see were once attached to the arrow shafts and used for hunting. The descriptions for the artifacts will give you a better idea of how these tools were put to use and the ingenuity of our ancestors. Food sources and how the ingredients are processed are often limited by the tools available and how mobile the people involved are. In prehistoric times, materials for tools were sourced from people's natural surroundings, which is why many prehistoric tools were made from stone. Tools were mainly developed to make gathering, hunting, and fishing easier. In other words, these tools were the reason why prehistoric humans could enjoy the freshest food possible, an ancient equivalent to the modern-day farm-to-table diet. Next, you will see the large table that showcases how prehistoric humans prepared their meals. To your left are biological specimens excavated from the archaeological sites. With these specimens, archaeologists are able to determine what sort of ingredients prehistoric humans used. Among these specimens are wild boar, reeves montjac, birds, frogs, and products like Job's Tears. In this part of the exhibition, we created menuless meals, much like what you would see in high-end modern restaurants out of the specimens excavated at archaeological sites. As you can see, prehistoric humans have a greater variety of ingredients than typically expected. For the most part, these ingredients were steamed, baked, or poached we welcome you to open up Instagram, scan the QR code on the table, and share which prehistoric meal you would like to have. Now that we know all about the prehistoric human diet, let's walk forward and move on to their dining table aesthetics. We invite you to join us in admiring the Made in Prehistoric Times pottery pieces. When producing containers for food, 
prehistoric humans would have prioritized functionality. That being said, many archaeologists were amazed by the artistic touch of these pieces, unearthed after millennia. Some of them resemble a wabi-sabi aesthetic, judging from the diverse collection of wide-mouthed bowls, vases, and jars, prehistoric humans were at the forefront of fashion. We aren't that different from our ancient ancestors after all. After seeing what and how prehistoric humans ate, do you feel like going back in time and taking a look for yourself? For us modern humans, getting food couldn't be easier. Just walk down the street and there are restaurants upon restaurants. You could also opt to have food delivered right to your door. The food that prehistoric humans consumed were less processed or heavily seasoned compared to what we eat today, and may even have been healthier. Moreover, prehistoric humans ate local because of the limits on their mobility and tools, creating a striking contrast with the carbon-intensive global food chain of now. It looks like we could learn a thing or two from our prehistoric counterparts. As the exhibition nears its end, let's explore how prehistoric humans began to modernize. At the dawn of civilization, humans lived in the environment where they had to face all sorts of dangers and challenges on a daily basis. You had to put in hard work and hunt to feed yourself and to survive. To stay alive, our ancestors had no choice but to invent different tools and containers. As humans began to settle, the demand for food also rose. Humans evolved from hunter-gatherers to tribal societies, which led to the farming of animals and a small number of crops. The most important development, however, was when humans discovered agriculture. To satisfy demands for food and increase production, humans had to develop irrigation systems. These demands became the motivation for creativity, which ultimately propelled human and agricultural development. Before you return to the service center, we invite you to explore the introduction of Wu Shantou Reservoir and Jianan Irrigation System to gain a better understanding of the engineering feats that made agriculture in Tainan possible. Our trip through history has come to an end. Finally, we encourage you to think about what sort of message you want to leave behind. Through observation, imagination, and comparison, stay curious and explore the past, present, and future. We also welcome you to share your thoughts on this exhibition.